Golf Destination is brought to you in part by Gosling's of Bermuda, the taste of Bermuda. This week on Golf Destination, presented by Gosling's of Bermuda, our online contributor Patrick Purcell takes us on a unique and one-of-a-kind fall golf trip. We meet Matt Parziali, the firefighter who won the USGA Mid-Amateur. Plus, we've begun our Facebook Live segments and teaching professional Sean Hester joins us for his teaching philosophy. All that and more next. Hello and welcome to Golf Destination presented by Goslings of Bermuda. I'm Meredith Gorman. Have you followed our social media handle of at Golf Destination? Today we take a look at some of the unique content you'll find there. Starting with our contributor golf trips. One of those contributors is Patrick Purcell. He joined executive producer Steve Icardi in our studios for a Facebook Live. Hi everybody, my name is Steve Icardi, I'm the executive producer for the television show Golf Destination and joining me today is Pat Purcell. Pat, thanks doing? for joining me. Uh, great to be here, Steve. We gave Pat, well Pat came to us and he had an incredible offer for us to, for some content and he was going to go on a fall golf trip of a lifetime. I love the fall because, you know, everyone's trying to get as much golf as they can in and fall is a great time and, you know, all your buddies generally plan some great trips around then. Tell me a little bit about your trip and uh, what you guys were able to accomplish. It's pretty crazy. Well, first, I'm glad my pitch worked. Uh, <laughs> right. Twist my arm. We're going to go play some great golf courses. Right, right. Uh, it was amazing. But actually, we had planned it for a few years because it was my father's 70th birthday. Mm -hmm. uh, he had taken a boat trip from Florida up to uh, Massachusetts with my two nephews a while back, and it was an epic, epic trip. And it gave him the idea for his 70th birthday to try to do it back in reverse, incorporating golf. I love guys who plan this. <laughs> this yeah, yeah. You yeah, need really, one of these guys in your He really friends, sets right? the bar the pretty high. Right? Yeah, he yeah. sets the bar pretty high on adventure uh, ideas. So then the, you know, as fun as the trip was, the conversation for the year and a half, two years leading up to it was also fantastic. Yeah, because every, you know, trip, exactly. Right. Exactly, because every, every time you get together as a family or go out drinks or holidays or whatever, he'd have a piece of paper with him. Like, what are the top 100 courses? What are the ones along the East Coast? Right. What are the ones along that we could try to play? And who do we have to talk to to get on what course? And, you know, who's going to come? And you know, it was great. So it was always a conversation. Yeah. And he worked hard on it, you know? I mean, he really had to, for, for two years, for a year and a half, whatever it was, um, had to do a lot of logistical planning around the whole thing, especially when we thought we'd be taking a boat to all the places. That turned out, it, it turned out for the best that we didn't take a boat. Uh, the seas were really rough from some of the hurricanes. Oh, yeah, it yeah, would have yeah. been. But the golf itself, we were thinking after the fact, we were like, thankfully we didn't take a boat because the golf was so great. It was right. better that we were just able to focus on that. I did like, I mean, the way you broke it up with each course, it was so much for it. You get, it, was, it was well shot, and uh, I think people enjoy it. You yeah, and you I mean? can't be intrusive on the course either. No, you can't you be got... intrusive on the pace of play. No, no. Um, yeah, that's yeah. why it almost is almost suitable with an iPhone. You know, right? I've exactly. Been, uh, you know, you just kind of sneak in, just quick shots of a cool looking hole. So, you sure. Know, your your brother in law trying to trying Absolutely. to make an approach yeah. shot. Yeah. Like everyone kind of does now, you know, and that's yeah. what everyone does now on any trip that they do and yeah. everything else. But that's great, and uh, definitely look for it on our online sites. And thanks again, Pat. You just let me know where you need me to go next. All right. I'll, all right. <laughs> Maybe I'll go, you know. Thanks again. And Thanks. Uh, keep an eye out for Pat's trip this fall at At Golf Destination. Thanks, Patrick. And if you want to see the complete interview, watch it on Facebook and YouTube. We'll show you an excerpt from one of Patrick's destinations. Next, teaching professional Sean Hester joins us for his teaching philosophy when we return. Welcome back to Golf Destination presented by Goslings of Bermuda. I'm Meredith Gorman. If you follow us online, you'll see former PGA Teacher of the Year, Sean Hester, offering teaching tips on our social media channel on YouTube and Facebook. Recently, he spoke with our executive producer, Steve Icardi, in our studio for a Facebook Live. Here are some of Sean's thoughts on instruction. I'm joined by a familiar face, well, starting to be a familiar face on the television show, Sean Hester, AKA Teacher to the Stars. Sean, nice to have you here. Thanks, Steve. Great to be here. Sean, tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, the whole teaching philosophy. We, we, we did some stuff with you uh, out in the field, but you, you teach everyone from beginners and juniors to, 
to tour players to top flight amateurs. How is teaching different for each person? What makes it fun is every person is different, and every per- person looks at the golf swing and comes to their golf game in a different, uh, with a different background and different ideas. So my job as a teacher, as a coach, is to get to know how they think about the game and how the game makes sense to them. And what's really fun is that every one of these players, good player, tour player, competitive amateur player, junior player, senior player, woman player, they all think of the golf swing in their own terms. The better players tend to think of things a lot differently than you know normal, everyday, handicapped golfers. Sean, tell me a little bit about when you have when you have a prospective um, uh, student come to visit you. What do you have a plan for them, or after how long do you have a certain plan in, in the development of them? I don't have a plan, and in order for me to get a plan, I need to talk to them and ask them a lot of questions and find out what works for them, find out what really brought them to sign up for a lesson and come for a lesson. Obviously, if they get to the lesson tee, there's something in their mind that they need to fix and they need to improve on. So until I understand what that is and how they think about it, I don't go with a predisposed idea as to what I'm going to teach them. How do you best describe your teaching philosophy? I mean, is there one or is it just, you know... I try to get results for each player. Each player is unique and individual and I love learning about the people that I'm teaching and I love trying to help them and figure out the puzzle of solving their golf game and Ultimately, my job is to help them shoot lower scores. So you had a pretty good fall with some of your uh, more accomplished players. Um, tell me a little bit about that. Well, I'm very happy for uh, you know each of these individuals. Fran Quinn, and I've worked with for a long, long time. Good friend of mine. And you know, Fran had to make a 20, 25 foot putt on the 18th green of the first playoff event. And if that putt doesn't go in, he does not have status for 2018. And he made the putt, shot 66 the last day, finished 53rd, good for conditional status on the 2018 Champions Tour, which is a big deal. And Rob Oppenheim had a great run through the Nationwide Tour playoffs. He had a really great second half to the year, and he got right back out on the PGA Tour. Uh, where he's where he belongs, and he's playing there now. Tell me that stat about him, like ten yards in, is some crazy stat. <laughs> Rob Oppenheim. When I went to work with him, uh, we have a mutual friend, uh, Ben Don, who's a producer at the Golf Channel. And Ben said to me, "Whatever you do, do not say one word to this kid about his short game. Nothing. I don't want you trying to teach him anything." And of course, Rob was the number two ranked player. On the PGA Tour. Which is, in essence, the world, right? You know, in the world. That's yeah, how good he is. The most competitive tour in the world. He's number two from inside 10 yards. And he's number 12 from inside 20 yards, scrambling. So that stat right there, you know, as a coach, you're trying, you're trying not to screw that up, I can tell you that. But how does that change a little bit? You're like, you're like he's scrambling from there, but is it because he's not hitting a lot of green? Like, so how do you work on trying to maybe not make that better, but the other part of it better? No, am I totally wrong? Well, with Rob, we, we focused on his driver, and we tried to, uh, we've always tried to work on driving. If he can drive the ball in the fairway and he's confident with his driver, he's going to play well. It's Regardless, as simple as that. Right, yeah. And then, obviously, on the amateur level, you had, is it amateur or amateur? How would you, uh, with, how, I, you know, people I would say, say amateur, amateur, I, I don't know what it is. I would say the amateur level. Okay, amateur level. On the amateur level, you had Matt Parziali, um, who won the U.S. Mid-Am, and people are probably already sick of it just for what I've talked about it, but uh, he had a great fall and a great season. Matt Parziali had a great season, and it shows what commitment and belief will do for you. Because he came into uh, the Harmon Club in February of 2017 and said we had a discussion. He wanted to win the Mid-Am and the U.S. Mid-Am, and he wanted to have a chance at qualifying for the Walker Cup team. So it's hard to achieve these things if deep down you don't believe them and you don't think they can happen. He thought they could happen. He talked about them happening, and that's how great things happen. So as Hester Golf, I want to win the U.S. Senior Amateur next year. Uh, so 
It's done, deal. That's it, right? I got it. Yeah. Well, there's a little thing called talent that helps. Oh, yeah. You it's know. true. Yeah, probably not in golf. <laughs> and if there's a sem- senior amateur in anything else, I might win, you know. <laughs> Talk fest. Um, to golf. And if you watch Golf Destination, we're going to air some of the clips, but he won't let me air all of them. <laughs> no, we're going to air some of the clips. Um, and you're really building a HestaGolf.com. Tell me a little bit about that and what your kind of thought process and putting in it and how to make people better players. So I think people a lot of times have the wrong concept of trying to hit a golf shot. For example, when they're on a tight lie, if you lean the shaft forward, you're probably going to stick the club in the ground and, and hit the ball fat, or the ball is going to come out too, too fast if you need a soft landing. So there are conceptual things that players need. And these videos, uh, and they're done with Fran Quinn and Rob Oppenheim helping me. I mean, to, to listen to Rob and watch Rob hit these shots, like we do a flop shot, we do all these different shots around the greens, you get to really see what he does, and he talks about what he sees and what he feels, what he's trying to do. And I think if you have the right concept as a player, it certainly helps you execute the shot. All right, well, that sounds awesome with the website. I mean, you probably wouldn't find a guy like Chris Carrig on it, my friend, but um, you will find some great tips from incredible playing uh, professionals and probably some amateurs at some point. But thanks again for joining us, Sean. Thank you, Steve. All right, take care. Thanks, Sean and Steve. Visit our Facebook page and our YouTube channel for the complete interview. We look forward to having you join the conversation online at Golf Destination. Up next, we meet with one of Sean Hester's students, USGA mid-amateur champion, Matt Parziali, the Brockton firefighter who should have an interesting 2018. Plus a whole lot more when we return. Welcome back to Golf Destination, I'm Meredith Corman. Matt Parziali is a Brockton firefighter who also happens to be one of the most accomplished amateur golfers in the country. Let's meet Matt as he tells us about his thrilling victory at the USGA Mid-Amateur and so much more. So the Mid-Am, um, there's 4,000 qualifiers throughout the country and only 264 make it there. Thankfully enough this year I was exempt from qualifying so I was able to go right to the tournament. Um, and yeah, it's a tough week. It's everyone plays good. You can't you can't play a bad round there and get away with it. It's a match play event. Qualify for 64 spots, and you play match play the rest of the week. And it was a hard week. Um, I worked hard to do this. Um, and the last day of the final, probably the most important day of golf in my life, I played a really good round and was lucky enough to win. Matt Parziali had a great season, and it shows what commitment and belief will do for you because he came into uh, the Harmon Club in February of 2017 and said we had a discussion. He wanted to win the Mid-Am and the U.S. Mid-Am, and he wanted to have a chance at qualifying for the Walker Cup team. So... It's hard to achieve these things if deep down you don't believe them and you don't think they can happen. He thought they could happen. He talked about them happening, and that's how great things happen. This was the fourth minute I played. The first one I missed match play in a playoff. And then the next one I played, I ended up being medalist. Um, I played really good those two days. Everyone's good, no matter if it's the 64 seed or the one seed. You play good sometimes and lose, or you play bad sometimes and win. That's part of match play. So winning the U.S. Mid-Am gets you a likely invite to the Masters. And um, that's not guaranteed yet, so we're just letting that one play out. Hopefully that comes in a couple months. But this year, for the first time, they gave the, they gave the Mid-Am winner uh, an exemption to the U.S. Open, which is huge. Um, I've been trying to qualify or play in these two events my entire life. And to be able to do both of them in the same years, it's going to be uh, it's going to be special. I played the USAM back in 2006 at Hazeltine, and this year it's at Pebble Beach. And I've never been to California, so I'm looking forward to being able to compete with all those guys, the college kids. It, it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough test, but it's uh, definitely looking forward to it. Patrick Purcell returns to give us just a snippet of his unbelievable fall golf trip. Thanks, Meredith. Yes, this fall I was able to go on an incredible golf trip. Let's show you some excerpts. Okay, well, here we are at Fisher's Island. Not as impressive as I thought, as I thought it might be, but uh, no, I'm just kidding. This is the dock where we get on the boat at Wild Bill's Bait and Tackle to head over to Fisher's Island. We'll see you over there. Are you 
years on boats and going to play golf. <laughs> what is better than that, fella? So, you get better than this. Catch our captain. So as you can see, we had a great time. Checked off some boxes on the bucket list, of course, as we've always wanted to play. And it made it extra special that it was my father's 70th birthday. Continue to follow at Golf Destination. We're planning the next trip. Thanks, Patrick. See the entire trip online on our social media channels at Golf Destination. Next, take a look at some cool drone shots we feature on Instagram for our Flyover Fridays. Welcome back to Golf Destination presented by Goslings of Bermuda. I'm Meredith Gorman. Did you ever think Fridays could get any better? Golf Destination's Flyover Fridays have done it. Here are some of the shots and courses that you'll see on Instagram. Now we've seen what you'll see online for new content, but visit youtube.com forward slash golf destination. You'll see past episodes in their entirety, plus other unique segments. So follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube for a golf experience that is ongoing 24-7. Thanks for joining us. I'm Meredith. We'll see you next time on Golf Destination presented by Goslings of Bermuda.
Destination is brought to you by Goslings of Bermuda, The Preserve in Wyoming, Rhode Island, Link Soul, Make Par, Not War, The Abaco Club, Barefoot Luxury in the Bahamas, Avidia Bank, 47 Brand, Delta, Keep Climbing. Presented by Sociable, original social media programming.